Back in May 2003, a horrific accident occurred on the grounds of Holiday World and Splash and Safari in Santa Claus, Indiana. It was an incident so shocking and unprecedented that it not only shook the state of Indiana as a whole, but also the city of New York where the victim was from. And to this day, the details surrounding the death of Tamar Fellner on a 110-feet roller coaster are still murky. But who was Tamar Fellner? What do we know about the incident? And who do we have to blame for it? Born on Thursday, the 13th of May, 1971, Tamar Etana Fellner was a warm, gregarious, well-loved woman from New York. She is fondly remembered by her family and all who knew her as a person who had a light that outshone the sun. She had a deep empathy for the less fortunate and a special place in her heart for those who'd been victimized in life. Not to mention, Tamar was an avid reader and she had a great sense of humor which played a good part in her role as a magnificent storyteller. A story from Tamar always left her audience in tears of laughter. She was beautiful and glamorous even, but she was also quiet and shy with an insecure side. Tamar was a volunteer patient advocate in the sex assault unit at Mount Sinai Hospital, New York. She shared an apartment with her fiancé in Lower Manhattan, where neighbor Washington Flowers described her as very social, just a happy, energetic person. It is clear that Tamar Fellner touched many lives and was a ray of sunshine to the days of those around her. This makes her tragic death at the young age of 32 even more painful. Saturday, the 31st of May, 2003, Tamar visited Holiday World and Splash and Safari in Santa Claus, Indiana. Owned and operated by Coke Development Corporation, Holiday World was opened on August 3, 1946. The park was known as Santa Claus Land prior to 1984, when the name was changed when the Koch family decided to expand beyond Christmas theme rides, and it currently holds a total of 49 attractions, including five roller coasters and two water rides. True to its name, Holiday World is divided into four sections, each section celebrating the holidays, Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and the 4th of July, with rides, live entertainment, games, and attractions. Being a thrill seeker, Tamar was a member of the American Coaster Enthusiasts, and she was at the park as part of a fun holiday trip with members of the Roller Coaster Enthusiasts Club. They were there to attend Stark Raven Mad 2003, an event hosted by roller coaster enthusiasts from around the country. About 850 other members of the American Coaster Enthusiasts were present at the park, and one of the roller coasters in the park that they planned to ride was the Raven. Sadly, it was on this roller coaster that Tamar Fellner met her end. Designed and manufactured by the now defunct Custom Coasters International, the Raven is a wooden roller coaster that was open to the public on the 6th of May, 1995. The ride takes its name from the Edgar Allan Poe poem, The Raven, and it was designed to feature sudden drops and turns that mimic the flight of a raven. Standing at 110 feet in height with a length of 2,800 feet, the Raven can reach speeds of up to 80 km per h, and its 85 feet drop was described by a roller coaster enthusiast as a drop that attempts to send riders flying cleanly out of the back of the train. The ride is made up of two trains with six cars. Riders are arranged two across in two rows for a total of 24 riders per train. The ride experience itself takes only about a minute and a half, and the Raven carries a total of 960 riders per hour. The Raven is such a thrilling roller coaster that it was voted the world's top wooden roller coaster in 2001 by the readers of Amusement Today and was included in a 2002 Discovery Channel feature on the top 10 coasters in the world. In fact, the roller coaster still operates to this day, and it was named Ace Roller Coaster Landmark by American Coaster Enthusiasts on June 23, 2016. At the time of the incident, the Raven had been operating for eight years without incident. All that came to an end when the nightmare occurred on that fateful day. At approximately 8 p.m., Tamar boarded the Raven with her fiancé, 41-year-old Rob Weitzner. The couple sat in the last row of the last car of the six-car coaster and, as was customary, they buckled their seatbelts and secured their lap bars before the ride started. To add to this, a safety check of her lap bar and seatbelt by a ride operator was carried out before the train left the station. Although nothing seemed to be amiss, things only take a darker turn from here, and the details of the case become murkier. During the ride, multiple witnesses reported that they saw Tamir virtually standing up from her seat, 
through the raven's first and subsequent drops. Whatever fun she must have been having came to an end at the ride's 69 feet final drop, also called the fifth drop. If you can recall, it's the same drop that was described as guaranteed to pull passengers out of their seats. In the blink of an eye, Tamar was flung out of the car and fell the 60 feet drop onto the tracks. To get a sense of the incredible height that she fell, note that female giraffes can grow to 15 feet tall. Imagine four giraffes stacked up on each other, or better still, the equivalent height of a six-story building. A drop light that is enough to maintain anyone but coupled with the speed of the roller coaster and the force by which she was ejected. It's clear that nothing could have been done to help Tamar. When the train returned to the station, Rob as well as ride operators and a passenger who happened to be a doctor ran back along the tracks in search of Tamar. She was found lying under the structure of the roller coaster at the point of the fifth drop. Emergency personnel was immediately contacted, but no one wasted time waiting. The doctor, aided by park medical personnel, began CPR until an ambulance arrived. But unfortunately, the injuries Tamar sustained proved to be fatal, as she was pronounced dead on the way to the hospital. Of course, the question of what exactly happened to Tamar Fellner remains, but it isn't exactly an easy one to answer. It's easy to blame her death on one mechanical error or another, but that turned out to not be the case. An investigation into the incident was carried out by the Division of Fire and Building Safety of the State of Indiana, as well as observations of the roller coaster by the former Marshal of the Santa Claus Police Department. And a report of the findings of the investigation showed that there was nothing mechanically wrong with the wooden roller coaster. Tamar's safety restraints were working properly and there were no noticeable mechanical deficiencies on the roller coaster. Also, there were no defects in the seatbelt Tamar should have been wearing, or with the restraining bar that should have held her in. Tamar's restraints were locked in place at the start of the ride, and the reports of her standing up during the experience make it difficult to put the blame on mechanical failures. It is also important to note that, by the time Tamar's car returned to the station, the restraints and seatbelts were unlocked. Tamar was memorialized at Temple Beth Shalom in Livingston, New Jersey, the same synagogue headed by her father, Rabbi Azriel Fellner. In her family's home in Jersey, about 1,500 people showed up to pay their respects and remember the life Tamar lived. She truly was loved by all, and her loss dealt a great blow to the community. Despite the witness reports and the result of the investigation, in 2005 Tamar's family filed a lawsuit against Holiday World and the Philadelphia Toboggan Company. This company made the Ravens roller coaster train. The lawsuit was settled out of court in 2007, and the terms of the settlement were not disclosed. Tamar Etana Fellner was a bright woman who had left a significant impact on those around her and had so much more to give the world. She was looking forward to her marriage to her fiancé, and starting a family with him was probably not out of the books. All that was gone after one went on a thrill ride that resulted in an unprecedented freak accident. But what do you think made Tamar stand up? Were the witnesses misreading things? Or do you think investigators missed something going through the ride?